today we come to UNHCR offices again to again work on our permits and then we're also going to talk with uh, Delphine Marie um, who's going to tell us a little bit about the situation in Chad in general and then more specifically about the refugees in Eastern Chad. Uh, hopefully we get to speak with some other people. Um, there's uh, Oscar that is with Community Affairs and then Andrea over uh, to talk about the environment. So some uh, different very important issues that uh, UNHCR deals with here in Chad. Uh, hi. And hi. <laughs> My name is uh, Delphine Marie. I'm a UNHCR spokesperson for um, Chad. You know, when I first started coming in 2005, uh, the feeling I would get from refugees is that they were going to go back home soon. Mm -hmm. They just had that feeling. Yeah. And then that has kind of been lost as I kept on coming. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the challenges when you have a population that is in a, almost a semi-permanent uh, mm -hmm. refugee status? Yes, we call it protracted situations and unfortunately it's very uh, frequent yeah. <laughs> across the world mm -hmm. and the challenges are, are that um, you need to look at longer term, you need to look at, at the life of somebody, you know, mm -hmm. you, uh, what is fair to offer to these people, what, what are their rights and it's not only survival we're talking about, it's the socio-economic rights, um, it's access to health, it's access to education, it's access to a future um, and to hope, you know, to be able to do something with their lives. It's a, it's a, it's a fair chance that you want mm -hmm. to give to these people also, um, despite the fact that they've lost everything and that they've fled. So it's, yeah, it's an enormous challenge. It, it's also a protection tool both for girls, because if girls don't go to school, they get um, married early and they have also early pregnancy and there are many instances of, of that and um, you know then there's also a number of cases of domestic violence or forced uh, marriages and for boys there's a lot of um, recruitment mm -hmm. that is possible if they go to school in a way we keep them at hand you know right. they're, they're in the camp they're supervised by the teachers mm -hmm. um, and uh, they're not uh, idling around mm -hmm. they're, less exposed to, to violence or to protection risks. Oscar, Oscar Nkulu. Uh, I work as community services officer uh, in this child office. You realize by going to the camps that you can now reach to people who never leave their houses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just because of some sort of handicap. Right. So, if you understand that kind of reality, you can sort of target assistance. So, how do we make of this person somebody useful to the whole community? Mm -hmm. What do you do to help this person live a dignified life like anybody else? Mm -hmm. And then through this kind of thinking, what happened uh, last year, for example, is we were lucky to uh, liaise with some American donors mm -hmm. uh, who said, OK, this is a problem. We know how we can contribute. They managed to get a number of ministries in the US. They put together uh, some funds and made uh, tricycles oh, oh yeah which were yeah. brought here and now what i wanted to show you i hope i'll get hold of it now is the picture of a young boy who had never left the compound where he was yeah. born and where he lived for the rest of his life till then uh -huh. who's now at the marketplace selling things uh -huh. you see uh -huh. and there are those who now could join school because thanks to their cycle, right. they, try, they could go to school and be part of this yes. community. Yeah. It's very real. It's authentic. <laughs> <laughs> very real, yeah. Oh no. <laughs>